Whenever events get triggered in your Shrimp account, you might need to kick off long-running multi-step workflows depending on the event type. However, this type of processing should not happen within your receiving endpoint. Instead, you should take those events and publish them to a message queue, then have another process pull them out and execute the associated workflow. With this approach, you're able to decouple the receiving of the events from the processing of the events, and it also makes it easier to both update and scale both sites independently. Now, if you'd like to see how this approach works, stick around for the rest of this video, and I'll show you how to implement it using the Tempora platform, as well as Stripe event destinations. First, let's take a look at this diagram. The application we'll be looking at is made up of a few independent services. There's a catalog service that manages the inventory, the basket service that's responsible for the shopping cart, the front-end web application, and also the workflow processor that's running the temporal workflow activities. When a new order has been submitted and the payment has been successfully collected, the front-end application will publish the message into RabbitMQ. In another process, the workflow processor will pull those messages out when available and kick off the long-running fulfillment workflow implemented in temporal. And having that queue in the middle allows both processes to operate independently and not have to wait on the other one. Now let's head over to the browser and see what this demo looks like. The Shadow Shop is an online storefront that sells Halloween costumes. All these products on the front page are being populated through the catalog service. If I click around on some of these items and add them to the cart, you'll notice that cart icon on the top right side getting updated. That component is being powered by that basket service. If I click on the cart icon, it should initiate the Stripe checkout process. Now I'll just go ahead and fill out this information. Now I'll click Pay and we should be redirected over to our success page. Once the payment is successful, a message should be published into RabbitMQ that'll go ahead and kick off our workflow. If I head over to the temporal dashboard and I refresh this page, I should see a new workflow ran to completion. I can click on the ID and I can observe the different activities that were carried out. So I can see the order confirmation was sent, the inventory was updated, and then the delivery was also scheduled. Now let's head over to my IDE to see how this works. Inside of the front-end project, I have a webhook endpoint set up to listen for Stripe events. On line 26, when the checkout session completed event is fired and the payment status is paid, I'll publish a message to RabbitMQ using the session ID for that event. Inside of the workflow processor, I have a service setup that'll listen for messages that get published on that queue. When a new message is received, it'll deserialize the payload and kick off the temporal workflow. On line 28, you can see that I'm using the temporal client to start the workflow and I'm also giving it a unique ID for this order. If we take a look at the Fulfillment Workflow class, you can see that we're defining the steps of the workflow in code. On line 17, we execute the Send Order Confirmation step. On line 24, we update the inventory. And finally, on line 32, we schedule the order for delivery. One of the benefits of using Temporal for this solution is that it saves the results of each step as it goes along. So if there was an error in updating the inventory, or if there is an issue in scheduling the delivery, we won't have to run this entire workflow from top to bottom again. We can just continue from where we left off. And if we dive even further into the implementation, we can see that steps are really just functions that are annotated with an activity attribute. And since this is a demo, there's really not a lot of code inside of here, but I think you get the point of what's going on. Now, if we head over to the Stripe dashboard in our browser, under the developers menu, we can click on event destinations. And we can see all of the events that got fired in our application. On the bottom left side of the screen, you can see the local listeners I have set up on my laptop. And that's because I have the Stripe CLI running locally that's proxying Stripe events into my application. But here I can see all my recent event deliveries. And if I click on the event section, I can drill even deeper and see what the payload for each event was. So if I take a look at the checkout session completed event, I can scroll down and see all of the event data for that order that was submitted. And this comes in handy because it provides me with some additional insights in case I need to figure out what's going on inside of my Stripe account. Building your workflows using an engine like Temporal not only helps boost productivity, but also empowers your engineers to deploy the solutions with a lot more confidence. And that makes it a great companion to be used alongside Stripe event destinations for your event processing. Now, if you'd like to learn more about Stripe and Stripe event destinations, make sure you check out the links in the description below. And also, please check out some of the other videos we're building here in the Stripe Developers YouTube channel.